God of love, thank you for the gift of your word. And I pray that in the written word, we may come to know the living God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So often when we talk of God, we will talk about how God is holy. We will talk about God being gracious and merciful and loving. But one of the most common things attributed to God in the Bible is something that is also often overlooked, and that is God's generosity. The generosity of God is one of those that is seldom discussed, and yet our God is a generous God. In fact, more than a thousand times, God is described as the one who gives. And the greatest evidence and expression of this giving occurred when God gave the gift of his only son for us. John 3.16 clearly reminds us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God showed his love to us by generously giving his own son so that we might be saved. What an amazing gift. God is described as one who gives more than he is described as anything else. Now it would be wise of us to consider that and to respond in gratitude and to emulate his generosity in the lives of people around us. Now today is dedicated Giving Sunday. And our scripture passage for today comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 15. In this passage, we see an amazing picture of giving. Now, whenever we study a passage of scripture, it's important for us to look at the passage in context. The Apostle Paul is concerned that the Corinthians have not contributed to the needs of the Jerusalem church the way that other churches have. And so the Corinthian church had promised a year early that they wanted to give a financial gift to be a blessing to the saints in Jerusalem who were being persecuted and were in a deep state of poverty. Because they loved the Lord and had a heart to help, they promised to give to the work of the Lord. However, a year later, a year had passed and the gift still had not been given. But it's not just about the rains and the sands. For the Apostle Paul, the lack of generosity on the part of the people of Corinth is a demonstration of a lack of faith. Just as God himself is generous, so too should the righteous people who follow him be. And as a result of this, Throughout the chapter, Paul emphasizes the importance of generosity and how it ties to their walk with God. Paul turns giving into a form of spiritual discipline. With financial generosity, glory is brought to God. The people will be able to grow in their walk with Jesus. There's also another benefit to, to, to the Corinthians participating in giving. The Apostle Paul shows that as they give, they will be seen differently by the church in Jerusalem. And so no longer will Gentile Christian converts be seen as a threat to Christianity. They will be seen as part of the body of Christ. So what does this say to us today on this as we rededicate ourselves in our time our talents and finances to the work of the kingdom of God. The Apostle Paul shows that generosity is not just tied to being a spiritual gift. Generosity is also tied with the way we order our lives together as Christians. So when we practice generosity, we are acknowledging the abundance of gifts we possess to share with God and those around us. And we are saying yes to the possibilities of ministry and an opportunity to give beyond something that only benefits ourselves. 
For example, as I look around our church, I see the beautiful stained glass windows, the furniture and everything in this place of worship. None of these things just appear out of nowhere. No, all of these things came because the people of God before us felt moved and stirred to give so that we might have a sacred place to come and worship. So all of us have been given something because someone before us gave what they possess for the glory of God's kingdom. And so as we read Paul's words to the church in Corinth, we are invited to do some soul searching about our own generosity. Do we give to the church because we know our financial offerings might benefit us personally? Or do we give so that we might have the opportunity to have our name attached to something so people can know who we, who we are? But giving to the church is not a paid contract. For the Apostle Paul, generosity is a discipline which will help people feel more connected to God and to one another. And so as people give, they grow in their walk with Jesus and contribute to the body of Christ in ways they never could have imagined. They become transformed as new creations in Jesus Christ. And so we see generosity is very much a discipline we are called to practice today. We know of the importance of tithing and how it helps us to be connected to God and to our church. And yet we also hear in today's scripture what generosity does in our walk with the Lord. As we give, we become more appreciative, appreciative and feel more joyful. We become more thankful for what we have in this life and can see all the beautiful ways that God is at work around us. The beautiful thing with generosity is that we can practice it in all sorts of ways. We can give financially and see how our money can transform the places we love. We can give of ourselves spiritually and see how the use of our gifts benefit those around us. We can give of our time and energy and see the fruit of being generous as we become more committed and attuned to those around us. So generosity can be a way that we draw closer in our walk with Jesus and become faithful disciples ready for the future ahead of us. And so as we recommit ourselves in our giving, it would be good for us to consider God's own generosity towards us, not for the purpose of spending more money on material gifts, but to consider his generosity as a core principle of his being and emulate that in any way that you and I can. Amen.